Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Sincerely Lady C, where I am as sincere as possible with this crazy thing called life, specifically life with infertility, even more specific, life journeying through IVF. So, crazy update is I took a, a cetratide on accident. Cetratide is the medicine that stops you from ovulating, and I was supposed to take that every morning, and I accidentally took that last night. But then I fell asleep and then I woke up and I was like, wait, something is wrong. And uh, yeah, so I did take the HCG when I realized that I took the wrong shot. I was freaking out a little bit and then, uh, well, I was freaking out a lot. And then Gregory came and he prayed, okay, husband, I see you. Okay, okay. husband, I'm doing his thing. He came and prayed and, uh, well, I called the clinic and they had a overnight um, doctor on call. So I'm really glad that he called back and I asked him, I was like, so do I take the cetratide in the morning or <laughs> what do I do? Because I just messed up my whole plan. Um, so he said, don't take it. And in the morning, just come see, uh, come see them with the ultrasound and the blood work and they'll tell me from there. I really like my clinic, but some symptoms on top of feeling bloated all the time. Like I really can't move a lot. Uh, no, I really can't move fast. I really can't uh, do like quick moves. I, I can't moonwalk anymore. I can't do my Michael Jackson spins. You know, I, I, can't, I can't do all that anymore. So I uh, can't do any hip thrusts. You know, Michael Jackson got me working, working thin. I, uh, none, none of the, um, you know, we moves. I can't do any of those. So I had to chill out. No going to the gym, like you've got to walk slow, sit down slow, get up slow. Like I just started doing choir walks. That's all I can do. Ain't no bouncing at all. And plus Gregory's like, protect him ovaries, protect the ovaries. Watch it, don't move too fast, protect your ovaries. He's cute. I like him, I love him so much. I have found myself getting um, very irritable irritable and emotional like I had a crying spell this morning I had a little trigger happen and yeah I just sat there and cried but I got it together like if you're going through this journey yeah you're gonna have a lot of emotions um but I would recommend you go ahead and wipe them away get yourself together because you got appointments to make time sensitive you got a whole heap of follicles getting packed jam packed in your ovaries and you got to get your life together so I'm trying to flatline my emotions, even though I'm getting pumped with hormones like crazy. I'm trying to flatline those things, but it is what it is. Um, and I noticed that I can't flop in my bed anymore. Don't judge me. So when I go to sleep, sometimes I flop. It's like a half of a jump type thing. Yeah, don't judge me. I like flopping. Um, so I had to learn how to just ease into my bed. No flopping, Chris, no flopping. You have to start eating healthier. Um, a little bit more fruits and veggies, more waters. All is well. I think everything is going, going pretty good. Even though I made a slight mistake. Mm. <laughs> We're still praying that my body responds as it's supposed to. And, uh, egg retrieval is next week. I don't know when. I don't know when I'm going to have to do the trigger shot. And if you're going through IVF, I would recommend you guys find somebody that you relate to. Because when I first started this infertility journey, I was looking people up and I was getting scared. I was really getting scared because their story um, kind of shook me. So I really had to stop YouTubing a lot of people. And a lot of people said that their stomach bruised. Uh, not mine, but I got a little, I got a little extra meat down there. <laughs> I'm not a small woman. I got a little extra, extra. So I got a little tummy and, uh, no bruises. A lot of people said that you bruise when you start taking your shots down there. And, but I did learn that I think my right side is more sensitive. Right side of my, uh, navel is more sensitive than the left. So I started just giving my shots on the left side. Except for the gonal F. The gonal F, I let Gregory still do those. Those don't hurt at all. I actually took over two syringes because the two syringes that has the cetratide and the HCG, those syringes hurt a lot. I've cried a couple times on them. Um, but it's less painful when you do them. 
Well, when I do them, other than Gregory do them, less painful. Still painful, but um, I took over that one. And um, Gregory still does the Donald F. So thank you for joining. If you have some questions about my journey, if I didn't cover something, if I didn't mention something, you can leave a um, question and I would be glad to um, answer that. But things get rough. Things get tough. Listen, I hadn't done anything around this house. Like, it's still a mess. It's not organized. And I'm sitting here like, I, I'm too tired. Oh, that's another symptom. Like, I'm tired. Like, I crash. I really crash. Other than being emotional, I'm tired. Mm -mm. I, I just want to sleep, sleep, sleep. And, um... Man, I told my nurse, I was like, is is that one of the symptoms or am I just tired? And she said, uh, yeah, because your body is creating a lot of energy toward growing your follicles within your ovaries. So, yeah, your body is using a lot of energy towards that. So I was like, OK, I was just making sure. Um, but nothing around this house. This house is terrible. I hope we don't have any visitors no time soon. And then like Gregory, I'm sorry. He hadn't had a good meal in a while. Lunch, not me. I just, um, mm -mm, nothing. 22, 21 follicles sounds really good. I got 21 and three potentials. 21 and three, three follicles that are less than 10 millimeters. So you want a whole bunch of follicles so they can make it through all those stages and then I asked Gregory a question, um, you know, how, when, after egg retrieval and implants, and if we only come out with one child on this IVF round, uh, the rest of our embryos is going to be frozen. So when we want our second child, we just go up there and say, hey, can you unthaw a boy? Or, hey, can you unthaw a girl so we can have another child? And then they unthaw and we get another one and Maybe we want three, you know, unthaw and get a third one. But what if we have like more than three embryos? Or what if we stop at two and we have quite a bit of embryos left? The question is, what do you do with those? Do you say, hey, you can just throw those away. Hey, do you, do you say somebody can adopt those? What do you do with healthy embryos when you have extra leftover? Question that um, I will have to answer soon. So be sure you subscribe. I will definitely share that too. And Little Baby Richmond, if you are watching, I love you. I love you already. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace out.